Matthew starts his gospel in a way that many modern readers might find boring, if you will. He starts with a genealogy. This is the genealogy of Jesus, son of Abraham, son of David. That's the way Matthew begins his story. It's really easy to skip over the first part of Matthew chapter 1, but I think it's, it's my opinion that he's doing something so important and so profound in this story. Again, we have to remember who Matthew is, what his cultural background and heritage is, and why he would think it necessary to begin a story about Jesus with a genealogy. Matthew is a Hebrew. He's so well versed in the Old Testament scriptures. Any linkage to a king is immediately going to grab the attention of his countrymen. It's kind of like this. Another famous author, J.R.R. Tolkien, wrote a series of stories that maybe you've read called The Lord of the Rings. Probably you've heard of them at least. And there's, a, there's one point in his first book, The Fellowship of the Ring, where this character who's shrouded in mystery is sitting in a council and another separate pompous character is bragging about his feats of justice and how he defends the country. And uh, this particular character who's uh, boasting in his success is a steward of the throne. He's sitting on the throne of the kings of men, but he's not the true heir to the throne. The actual heir to the throne is lost, is disappeared. No one knows where he is. And as this particular man uh, boasts about how great he's been for the kings of Middle-earth, uh, he looks at this other figure who's shrouded in mystery and says, basically, what do you know? You're just a ranger. And another person in the council who knows the true identity of this obscure figure stands up and says, that's not just any ranger, that's Aragorn, son of Arathorn, king of Gondor. And it's this moment of realization that in the name, in the genealogy of this person, the king is present. You see, what Tolkien did in Lord of the Rings, Matthew does in Matthew chapter 1. He begins his genealogy with, this is the story of Jesus, son of David, son of Abraham. And you almost think that the next phrase should be, king of Israel. As we open up Matthew 1 and we study the genealogy, think about why that would be so important for someone like Matthew to get across to his reader. Think about what message that would send to an audience of Hebrews living in a time where they long for the, for the king who God is going to send to come back. This genealogy is a birth announcement. The return of the king has happened.